Very good afternoon to everybody here today. I think um, thank you, Sai and for the amazing staff at Ava Labs for putting all this together, for everybody for taking the time out to come and hear me speak today, and for everybody watching on the live stream as well. My name is Ka, I'm the strategy lead at Quabara, and today I'd love to give you all our presentation on Quabara and Swimmer Network. So, I see me this, sorry. Uh, there we go. So, <clears throat> for those of you who don't already know Kobara or aren't part of the Snipsit family. Kobara is an idle game on the Avalanche C chain, and we had built Kobara as a game that was supposed to be easy to pick up, easy to learn, and also be extremely fun. So Kobara is playable on mobile and web, and you can use Kobara. Um, to play Kobara, you need the crap NFTs, and by playing together these crap NFTs, these NFTs can get you our cryptocurrency tokens, which are Qua, TAS, and CRAM. So what can these tokens do for you? These tokens will allow you to play the game and also afford you things like in-game convenience. So we started in November 2021. And since then, I think we've grown by leaps and bounds. Um, in no due part, thanks to all our very strong sponsors, partners, and of course, our community, all of you guys. So when we started with the idle game, we had a few key parts that we wanted to introduce to the Kobara world, right? And so for these Kobara, we have, sorry, one second. Uh, yep. So Kobara is set in a world of fierce fighting crabs, and these crabs all have their own interesting background and lore. I'm sure you guys might have seen the, the law and the artwork. I hope you guys have. And so these crabs, you use them in the other game to mine. You send your crabs out into the deep oceans to seek valuable treasure. And when you go to mine, you run the risk of the looters coming to attack you and steal your loot. When this happens, this triggers a PvP interaction where the miners have to defend themselves against these looters. And in order to defend themselves, they have to call upon reinforcements, either from their own inventory or from a tavern. Last but not least, our players can also use their crabs to breed with each other. This in itself is a little meta game as well because each crab breeding gives you the chance to spawn very unique and special desirable crabs that I'm sure many of you wish you had. So since our start, we've come leaps and bounds again. And I think we are just so proud and so humbled to be in this position and to be in the hearts and minds of all of you here. Just to share some snippets of data of how far we've come. Um, today, we have about 5,000 daily active users, and these 5,000 users play a combined 45,000 games of Kobara every single day. Um, this is amazing on, on just the game fund, but even on the marketplace side. Our marketplace started with about, I think, 2.5 million tasks daily volume, and today, we are at 20 million tasks. On the network side, in terms of our players and their interaction with the C chain, our players spend anywhere from um, four to five million USD every month in gas fees. And together, these players form about 18 to 20% of C chain gas fees consumption. Last but not least, our players and our community have turned CRA and TAS to the first and third most transacted tokens on Avalanche. So having said all this, I think we're just super, super excited and super proud to have come to this stage. And as a reward to the community, we'd love to drop a teaser for our upcoming battle game. I hope you guys enjoyed viewing that as much as we did making it. So our battle game, Beta, is slated to launch mid to end April, fingers crossed. And when it launches, it will build upon the good things that we've already integrated into our idle game and try to bring you 
what we believe and want to be the ultimate embodiment of the Kovara experience for all our players. So in the battle game, there are features that people will be familiar with, but also new features that we aim to excite everybody with. For example, players can now explore the oceans through PvE adventures. Players will have the chance to go through maps, nodes, and fight computer enemies, including boss mobs as well. Clearing these maps gives players access to special zones where they can actually do different mining and looting that awards them varying material currencies that they then use later. Players can also now challenge the whole ocean through PvP battles. Currently in our idle game, there is only the PvP engagement between miners and looters. And while the first version of our battle game will still hold that same context, in the future, players will be able to battle each other on the battle game in many other different modes. One note, however, is that for the first iteration of the battle game, our battles will now be asynchronous, played out in real time. Instead of needing to use reinforcements, you use energy to help you play throughout the day. In addition, we also are shifting our idle, from our idle game to the battle game, we are also introducing a crafting-based economy. This crafting-based economy is aiming to set the foundation for more specialized use cases in the future, such as factional resources and other interesting experiments that we'd like to deploy into Kobada. For example, you can use these factionalized resources to influence breeding, or they might even be a direct requirement in the breeding formula itself. Last but not least, for progression, in the idle game, crabs do not necessarily grow over time. But in the battle game, players will now have the ability to improve their crabs and maximize the potential over time. To do so, you will need, some, you will need a currency within the game itself. Uh, we're calling it crystal shells. And by using these crystal shells on your crabs, you will be able to push them to their maximum potential. However, in order to keep those crabs at their maximum potential, you have to feed them by food. And how do you get this food? It goes back to the crafting economy. You need to use your rewards to craft this food, which you use to then improve and make your crabs stay at their maximum potential. So having said all this, I think we are also very proud to stand here today and share a very big part of Kobata's future, which is Swimmer Network, the dedicated gaming blockchain. So for us, what is Swimmer Network and what is it going to offer to all the gamers, the builders, and the community developers out there? The first thing is that we want Swimmer Network to be a welcoming environment for all players and everybody else. And this is seen in our design philosophy where it's supposed to be fun and engaging. In terms of actual features, one of the key things would be the ability to offer a no to low gas experience for all the gamers and builders who come to Swimmer Network. And how will this be done? This will be done through our fee cover model where Game, where, game, where game projects can engage a functionality where the game project will pay their users' gas fees on their behalf. By doing so, we believe that this can reduce the onboarding friction for gamers and for, by extension, game builders as well. So in terms of tokenomics for Swimmer Network, we are going to be using TUS to leverage the growth and the community that we already have in Kobada. So, in addition to just using TUS, we are also taking it a step further by making it more sustainable both for Kobata and for Swimmer Network. How are we going to do this? We are doing this by burning a portion of the network fees that are accrued in TUS through Swimmer Network. Last but not least, I think, like I said before, we are very humbled to be here. And we would not be here without the generous support and help of Ava Labs and the amazing community out here. So we want to do what Ava Labs did for us and to help anybody who wants to come to Swimmer Network thrive in the same way that we were afforded. To do so, we are assembling a dedicated team to support builders and gamers coming to Swimmer Network. And one way that we're doing that is through our ecosystem grant initiative, where outstanding and deserving community developers are offered grants to come and build tooling or analytics applications for Swimmer Network. So we're coming to the end of the presentation, but our future plans are only just beginning. So for the game side, we are going to continue to reduce barriers to entry to our game. Why is this important? I think it's because even with all the growth we've seen, we really believe that a strong and a large thriving community is the key to a sustainable game in the long run. 
Secondly, we are going to continue to update and keep our idle game fresh. We want to make sure that the gameplay experience is maintained and improved. For the battle game, the beta, like I mentioned, will come out mid to end April, but this is just the start of a very long journey, and we envision many more updates and many more features to come in days and months to come. On the marketplace end, as we grow Krabata and Krabata grows with you all as well, the needs for the marketplace will go as well. We will be deploying increased and sorry, improved analytics for our marketplace, as well as increasing the amount and number of types of assets that can be traded on our marketplace. Last but not least, for Swimmer Network, we are going to continue to seek out gamers and game builders who want to build on Swimmer Network, and we are also going to be rolling out in the near to medium term support for third party applications and tooling. With that, I think I've reached the end of my presentation, and I wish you all snip snip.